Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to respond to the um, comment you made about uh, black musicians <clears throat> finding it more difficult than white musicians to get work in the UK. I mean, all, all musicians struggle to get, all jazz musicians struggle to make a living out of jazz. Um, I've been involved in jazz promotion for many years. I know many promoters, and I do not believe what you say is correct. Uh, I think some of us would feel insulted by it even. Um, you know, I, I booked book all black bands, all white bands, and mixed bands. And I don't believe there's any prejudice amongst jazz promoters in the UK. I don't believe that's true. Yeah, I think, uh, Kevin, if you'd like to respond to that. Um, I'm afraid I disagree with that. I think you have to be in my position, but you can't be. You have to, you have to walk a couple of steps in my shoes. Um, and I don't speak for every black person in the country, but I can speak with a lot of authority on it that a lot of people, uh, you know, I can go back to the point of, I knew a BB jazz artist, I know Courtney Pine, I knew, I knew what they had to go through. And yes, I took, yes, I took a center in London and how they, what they had to do to get the Jazz Warriors started. And, you know, there was a lot of difficulty. I mean, um... Sorry, just, just wait for the mic. Go on. I think, it's like I said, like I said, it's hard for, for, to put it into context. I think like everything, some people have faced racism, some people haven't, I need to say that. But this is the historical context. If people go back to the 1930s, they find that the Musicians' Union and the Labour Exchange stopped musicians from getting work in this country. This is how I was trying to make the point about history. When you talked about history, the problem is that because we don't know our history, people are talking from just their personal opinions. But if you go back historically, you'll find when musicians like Fats Waller came to this country, they refused work by the Musicians Union. That could be because of the depression, I don't know, but that happened as a physical fact. So I just wanted to bring that, because I think it was all about history can help us. I'm not saying history is always right, that's the first thing, but it helps us to get some form of context to when we have these discussions. Because sometimes we're living in the modern age, and the modern age is very different. We come here and, as a different cultures and we talk. Remember, it wasn't always like this. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So that's why I said history helps us to have a balance with the conversation. So historically from the 1930s, there is information that identifies what actually what actually what Kevin's saying, not only today. And can I just say that um, I, do, I don't want to offend you personally, or I have no beef with anybody personally here. All I was saying is what I see is a statement of fact, is the social reality of, of uh, when you're in a minority. Um, it's natural that self-interest and cliques and, and uh, the majority will look after themselves culturally. You know, um, uh, uh, anyway, sorry. sorry. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's an important, it's not unique to here, you know, but we are in a, we're in a black diaspora, we're in Europe, we're a minority here, you know. This is, this is, this is a statement of fact. Everybody knows it. If there's 60 million people in the UK and there's about a million people who are black or something or Asian or two million or something, then we're in a minority group. We have to fight, punch above our weight to get, to, to compete in the workplace. That's it. Um, we've got a comment there and also one there, so if we can have... Um, I just wanted to say that from, from a different point of view, um, I think it comes back to networks and music, like relies on networks, like meeting other musicians. That's the way you get work, it's word of mouth. People saying, oh, I know this guy, you know. And so there's different reasons why you might not be part of that network. And I just think that's what it comes down to in the end, but who knows what those reasons are. Like I identified with the idea of coming into music late and not going through that traditional system because that's my experience. And I have that feeling of not being linked up so much. I feel like I'm becoming more linked up just from going around and getting out there and doing it. But but I think that's what it comes down to in the end. And um, that's, that's my little thing to add. As a black performer who performed a lot here in Manchester during the 80s, 90s, and into early noughties, 
um, I found that there is a certain degree of um, discrimination towards bands that have black musicians fronting them as opposed to musicians who are white fronting bands. And, you know, that became so evident at one point, there was several letters in City Life about it, and I so, was so concerned about it that I actually raised it with the Musicians' Union. Suffice to say, it never came to any kind of resolution, and I left the Musicians' Union feeling quite disillusioned about it. But, you know, I'm hoping that now we're so far on, a lot more will have been done about it. But I found this discussion fantastic because these discussions need to happen more regularly. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we're going to have to wind up because we're, we're slightly over time, but I, I think Chris has had to leave because he's got to get a train back to Sheffield, otherwise he won't get back to Sheffield. Um, can I just ask the, the people left on the panel, just to make a comment, as kind of summary comment, as to, as to where, what they'd like to see happen uh, in jazz, in Manchester, in the UK. Um. Personally, I would like to get more chance. I'm talking now to the venue, festival people organizer, to you uh, be, I don't know if, I, if it's, it's, not an, it's, it's not an insult, but I would say to be more open-minded. So in terms of uh, not limiting uh, the style of the jazz, what you play, because just remember when I first came here, it was very, very hard for me to play in a jazz club in Manchester or any place when I was advertising myself as a full jazz musician. And uh, on top of that, I was uh, exiled from my country to be here. So I had two negative connotation on my name. So it was very hard. So I'm just hoping in the future, we just say, let's sit down and play music. Like what we do, what happened in the beat in orchestra. Um, playing a band is composed with Chinese singer opera, Ch a sing African singer. Uh, myself on the keyboard, double bass from uh, Wales, uh, Brazilian percussionist, Indian singer and percussion player. But we, we all sit around the table and produce music and we record our album last month. So that's my hope, just sit down and play music. Nothing about color or whatever. And if it's about jazz, we just play jazz because uh, the way you understand the harmony is the same. The same C major is the same C major in Africa or in Asia or in Europe. So just sit down and play and let ourselves, for our inside, come out. That's a really good point. Um, well, I think, I mean, I, I love what um, Steve and the guys at Manchester Jazz do, and I, I, th I think they're great. Um, and I think the clubs in, in the city are great. Uh, the reason why it does always seem so difficult to get a, a steady stream of, of decent gigs, I mean, I don't know why. I'd have to, I'd have to give it some serious thought about the solutions. I, I can't come up with a pat, a pat statement. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Thanks for being completely honest about that. Um, Kevin, is there anything you'd like to? I mean, uh, well, I think it's been a great debate, interesting debate. Um, yes, it got a little political. The gentleman there has left. I, I hope I haven't offended him too much. Uh, you have to break a couple of eggs to make an omelet. Um, you can't just network out there and it's rac racism disappears. It doesn't work like that. Um, I'm a big networker. I'm the biggest, you know, myself and Clive and other people around. So it's not a matter of just networking and everything just disappears like that. People have to consciously uh, want to be inclusive, have a real serious um, intention to be inclusive in this music and acknowledge each other intellectually, spiritually. And that's what it's all, all about. Okay. Okay, um, so we're, we're, we're pretty much uh, over time now, so I'd like to thank all of you for coming. I'd like to thank all of the panel, thank also uh, Manchester Jazz Festival, and also 
I'd uh, like to mention that the, my, my partner in crime in lifting the lid is Frankie Mullen, who's at the back there running around with a microphone, as you mentioned earlier on. So, um, and also the, the technical staff um, who've helped us out here, this gentleman here, as well as Aidan Jolly, who's been uh, doing the, the mixing for us today. Um, dropped in at the last minute to help us out there. Um, anybody else? Uh, and Steve Mead, of course, who's uh, been, been really supportive. I should just say that the Manchester Jazz Festival, when when we suggested this as a possibility to do, that they really have been supportive, really um, behind the whole idea of this. So I'm hoping this can go somewhere further. I feel as if we've got somewhere, but we scrape the surface as well, we could go a lot deeper. And possibly next year, we may be able to get something uh, going in a more rigorous and hopefully funded way. I don't know, where, I don't know how that happens, but uh, we can talk about that. Anyway, thank you very much for coming.